So last summer we got a new lawnmower along with a shed to store it in. The old mower floated around from being stored in the shop to under the carport or just out in the yard, which isn't good for it. So with the new mower we wanted to make sure we had a good place to store it. But the shed needed a ramp to be able to get the mower in, which I didn't get around to making until now. So for the first winter the mower was stored under the carport. The first thing I did was I added a layer of OSB sheeting to the floor of the shed for extra strength since we're storing a heavy piece of equipment in there for long periods of time. The company we bought the shed from would have done this for us, but they wanted to charge $200 to do exactly the same thing. It cost me $50 and 20 minutes to do. I used galvanized lag bolts to attach uh, what I guess you call the ledger to the shed. Uh, looking back, uh, using screws probably would have been fine for this. You'll notice I'm using my square and I have it set to make sure that the ledger is at the correct height so the decking ends up flush with the floor. For projects like this, I find it's very helpful to draw them up in SketchUp. If nothing else, it gives me a way to estimate the amount of material that I'll need. In this case, after taking careful measurements of the shed, you know, how high it sat off the ground and things like that, I was able to get an accurate model of the ramp and the ramp joists, which was helpful in getting the angles that I needed to cut them at uh, so they fit properly against the ledger and sat on the ground at the correct angle. I'm cutting the first joist here, and so I'm using the protractor to mark the angle that will attach to the ledger. I'll set my miter saw to the correct angle, but for this first joist, uh, this line is here as a sanity check. So I'll admit that before this point, I was wondering how I was going to cut the ground angle on the joists. I think it was a case of overthinking it. But it occurred to me that I could just freehand the cut with my circular saw. And once I had the line on there as a guide, it worked really well. Uh, being absolutely precise in this case I don't think is necessary, so if there's some weeble wobbles from the saw, uh, as long as the cut is generally the angle that it needs to be, I think you're okay. And I'm using the protractor here just to mark the ground angle on the board. Obviously it's not long enough to go the full length, but it's just a sanity check to make sure that the measurements I've marked as I connect the two lines here with the straight edge uh, line up with that mark so that I know that the angle is correct. So a tip that's helped me uh, cut straighter with a circular saw is to look a little bit ahead of the line. Uh, don't look exactly uh, at the line. Look a little bit ahead. Sort of look to where the saw is going or where you want it to go. Because if you look at the line, I think you tend to sort of do these micro adjustments which end up uh, giving you those weeble wobbles in your cut. So I'm attaching the joists here, and this may not be the best way to do it. Um, it may have actually been better to have assembled the entire ramp, self-contained unit, and then bolt it to the shed. That way I could have come in from the, uh, the back of the ledger into the face of the joist here, uh, instead of coming in at an angle, but it ended up working, so... We have a lot of rogue uh, blackberry vines that grow around here, so just to keep anything from growing up from underneath the ramp, I just laid some uh, garden fabric underneath it. So I'm adding this blocking just to give the joists some rigidity and to set the spacing uh, between them so it's correct. Uh, but structurally, they don't do anything once the decking is on. They're just there to add that rigidity and to set the correct spacing between them. 
So the first piece of the decking was cut to its final length because I wouldn't have had enough room uh, to get the circular saw up far enough to cut it off. The rest of the decking is left long, and then I go back and I, after it's all attached, and cut it all to length at once. So you may notice that there's a gap between the first piece of decking and the shed floor. And the reason for that is, is that based on my drawing, I thought I was going to have to cut a filler piece that had an angle to match it up. So it was uh, made a nice transition between the, the ramp decking and the shed floor. Uh, it turned out, that, and I realized this as I went to go cut that piece, that filler piece, that uh, leaving it straight worked out just fine. Uh, that that angle didn't have to be cut in. So in hindsight, I could have actually uh, bumped this first piece of decking uh, or butted it up against the, uh, the shed floor. So at this point I decided uh, it was time to test the ramp and it worked great. Um, and it was also at this point that I realized I may have actually overbuilt the ramp a little bit. So the next step was to make it so that the shed doors actually close. At this point, the uh, ramp interferes with them closing. And so before I took them off to uh, trim them down, I marked uh, where I needed to cut them. I used a Dremel to cut the piano hinge where I needed and then trimmed the door using my circular saw and then a uh, reciprocating saw to follow up where the circular saw couldn't reach. I'm just putting in that uh, filler piece to bridge the gap between the first piece of decking and the floor of the shed, and also installing a piece of uh, metal trim, mostly to protect the uh, OSB sheeting so that the edge of it doesn't get torn up uh, as you're walking or moving things in and out of the shed. I just used a small strip of the trim uh, for the bottom of the door where it was cut off, um, and it wasn't enough that I felt like I could either nail or screw it on, so I used some construction adhesive and just uh, glued it in place. It seemed to work well. And there you have it all finished. I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.